Trevor, it's Avery, it's Pat, it's Marlon, it's the Citywide Special. The Phillies' hot stretch hits a bump in the road with a series opening loss versus the Atlanta Braves. Starting pitching has been excellent in the month of June, but have the bats been too quiet as of late? Can the Phillies finish strong against the Braves before moving on to the lowly New York Mets? The NBA draft is upon us, but will the Sixers have a pick to make? Can Daryl Morey find a way to buy into the second round? Is a Tobias Harris trade imminent? The NHL draft is a week away. Who will be available for the Flyers at 7? Will Danny Briere trade for additional picks to bolster the rebuild? And how many more former Flyers can the team fit in the front office? All that and more coming up right now. How's it going, fellas? Pretty good. Another week, another great episode. Once again, a nice little wet walk on the way over here, but luckily no one had to take 95 to get here. No one took a submarine to get here, so we're all we're all doing pretty good. Yeah, I think uh, the, the amount of times we've recorded an episode that it's raining is probably higher than the amount of episodes we've recorded when it's not <laughs> raining, yeah. but we're not as wet as the people in the submarine are probably going to be once uh, <laughs> all the water pressure oh. just comes crashing <laughs> down and just causes the entire thing to blow up. They, they, they won't be alive by then. They're probably already dead, but hey, yeah, so we're better than that. Yeah. <laughs> Get to that later, but <laughs> how you doing, Marlon? Uh, I'm good. Or, I got uh, This is Marlon, everybody. Marlon's here. Uh, hey, everyone. Um, I got no submarine joke, but happy to be here. <laughs> good to have you on here. Our second guest. Feels good. Cool, cool. Well, you know, before we, before we get into things... Uh, we had briefly touched on the, the Zion Williamson situation last week. Mm -hmm. And over the weekend, you know, I was actually able to get in touch with his agent. And we actually have <laughs> Zion here on the line so uh, for, a, for, for a brief interview. So uh, uh, I just wanted to, wanted to ask you, Zion, you know, there's a lot of these uh, crazy rumors going around, uh, you know, a lot of uh, accusations being thrown around. We'll just, Wanted to get your uh, your take on all this. I love sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that's all right. Uh, nothing no, nothing wrong with that. Um, is there? You know, would you? Uh, Can't do shit no more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, basketball wise, I mean, how do you how do you feel about uh, you know some of these uh, trades that are being? Uh, I'm blessed. Well, I'm sorry. What was that? And I'm blessed. <laughs> oh well, sure. You know, as a. You know, as a basketball player, you know when you're when you're, when you're healthy, Zion. You know you're definitely, uh, you know, probably a good, uh, you know, some would say a top five player in the league. I'm big boned. <laughs> I'm heavy structure. I'm hung low. <laughs> All right. If you know. I pull my shit out, this whole room get dark. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, Zion, I think that might be <laughs> just about. You know, all the time we have here. I love here. sex, man. I love it by the pound. <laughs> I'd be glad when they put that shit in cans. All right, well, yeah, good luck to you on uh, the rest you of the season. sex and cans? Motherfuckers be shoplifting and shit. All right. Uh, all right, that's Zion Williamson, everybody. <laughs> Damn. Good luck, Zion. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe maybe, maybe Daryl will, will get you here in Philly. Probably not. <laughs> anyway. That's the new, <laughs> that's the new sound. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, that, that is, of course, the late, great Bernie Mac. <laughs> Yeah, that has been rumored, Zion, to the Sixers. So I, I did, yeah. It was like, I forget what the proposal was that someone threw. I mean, it was just someone making some shit up, but, like, I forget what the what the package was. Probably, uh, yeah, I, I forget what it was. Yeah, I don't think there, it, like you said, there wasn't anything It was just some, some crazy shit someone made up. I was also hearing Ja Morant, our boy from last week. Um, there was some, some smoke around him getting crazy. <laughs> There he is. <laughs> there he is. But uh, kind of the same situation, right? Like, there isn't any legitimacy to it. It's just someone making things up, thinking he could use a change of scenery. I don't think any change of scenery is going to change the fact that he's an idiot. But uh, Yeah, therapy is a great change of scenery, for sure. I don't think Philadelphia is the best bet for him. <laughs> yeah, it might make yeah. him worse, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what do we want to start with? Who do we want to start with this? Phillies, Sixers, Flyers. Uh, I guess we can talk some Phils real quick, who are currently in a rain delay. I don't know if they're going to get this game in. But lose last night against the Braves after a very successful road trip. They win the series against the Dodgers and sweep the terrible Oakland A's, soon-to-be Las Vegas A's. 
Yeah, I'm not um, not too concerned about last night's loss. I think that we kind of touched on it before the podcast, just about Philadelphia's historical run at divisional opponents, and they kind of build shit up all the time. Um, you had that guy on the mound with the mustache. The name's escaping me now, but that guy. Strider. Yeah, that guy typically gives us a hard time to begin with. And He's half, a good pitcher. Half the guys that came up last night were like over seven in their career as a Philly against him. So, like, it was okay, but they got their hits in. I think yesterday came more down to not pitching or not really even hitting, but bad situational baseball. <clears throat> JT, he'll hit for the cycle one night, then he'll do a dumb steal play, or he'll push it for a double. It's like uh, that. That is a head scratcher for me. I don't think that that is the real kind of uh, regression I've seen from JT, where his base running is so bad in crucial moments of the game. I mean, we're only down by three at that point. Yeah, that was you a just get it down within killer. two, and then you try to get a double for no reason. You get picked off. You know, the throw comes in, and yeah, he might have been safe it's with still the replay. Just a stupid play. But come on, man! All that momentum just there kills it. Now there's yeah. no one on base. You got two outs now. And earlier in the game, Bryce Harper gets thrown out, like caught between second and third. Oh, I mean, yeah. like, was... I don't think we have to be leading the league in base running outs. But that thing, it's I don't insane. think you can do anything about that though, because it was. I get that because he would have had to tag up had it ran. Like he didn't know where who was. It was to his left side. He was looking to the right to third base. So by the time he looked back to get back to second, he you know he was fucked. He's like, you got me there. It yeah, that the, the, the Harper play was a little a little. I guess excusable. The JT play was just dumb, man. There, there's no reason to to push at that extra base. You're not gaining that much by it. And then it's the boy. The ball was hit. Most guys were just gonna settle for a single anyway. You already he got may the have been safe. He was probably out. But either way, it just you can't be doing that. That cost us a chance at the beginning in a game that ultimately, what do we lose by two runs? That's it. Which isn't yeah. bad. Ranger had a great game against a really good team. Yeah, he's been looking great lately. Yeah, so. yeah. I don't want to harp too much on uh, last night's game because mm-hmm. you mentioned it, Trevor. The pitching staff has been way better. Rangers been great. Wheeler hasn't had his best stuff, but it's been strong. Uh, Taiwan Walker has killing it. Got it together. Nola is gonna do what Nola's gonna do. Um, but if they get solid pitching performances three out of five games, the way of pitching is at, in baseball right now in general. Probably going to win more often you're going to lose. Yeah, man, I, th- I think I've been encouraged by the past couple of weeks. I mean, we were just not too long ago talking about might they be uh, sellers at the trade deadline. I think we put that to rest. And uh, last night was a game where we kind of we faced a pitcher who gives us a hard time and we didn't make him pay early on. That's, that's kind of the whole of it. But uh, I'm encouraged by the last few weeks. And um, I'd like to see us as buyers at deadline get one more pitcher maybe. I think we can make a run. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, uh, Andrew Painter seems like he's uh, inching his way back. I think he threw another bullpen or something. I guess the next step is him actually throwing against live batters. Probably won't be until at least like another like month or so, it seems. But, um, you know, that could finally give him that fifth starter that they need. I've give heard- another guy, another guy maybe in the playoffs, hopefully. I haven't heard a whole lot of – acquisitions from a pitching standpoint, but <clears throat> a name that popped up this week that was interesting that I heard was Goldschmidt, yeah. which really? would be enticing. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I guess the Cardinals are really bad this year. They're ass, you know, and the Phillies. Can he play anything do. other than first? I mean, I'm not sure, but that would kind of, looking at it, would kind of free up if they're expect. you know, you don't want to have Bryce Harper forced to play first base. If he can just rock with the DH, that'd be okay. But then you have Schwarber in left field. I mean, you know, I'm not. I don't know. I think that can I would. Gold, can Goldschmidt play left field? <laughs> Probably not. But uh, he can't be any worse than Schwarber has been in left. Well, it would also, you know, you got Cody Clement or Goldschmidt. That's what I look at it as. Yeah. And like that'd be okay if, if nothing else changes in the lineup. But that that's not a bad move if they can make it work. I don't, you know, I don't look too much into the deal that way. But well, what would the price of that be? Well. <laughs> This organization doesn't really care about that. They don't mind spending the money or getting fined or the luxury tax, whatever it may be. But, you know, it was interesting. I think that's more of a realistic acquisition than Otani would be or anything like that. Mike, yeah. Like the beloved Mike Trout, obviously would have to have him. But, like, realistically, a 30-something-year-old Goldschmidt coming off of an MVP year, I could see him doing that, pulling the trigger and doing that. It wouldn't help the bullpen at all. But, you know, it's another new bat. It's exciting. 
Yeah, I'm looking at his baseball reference page, and he has never played a position other than first base. So <laughs> he's a damn good first baseman. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I mean, that definitely solves the losing Reese Hoskins problem. Then that would be a big old thumbs down for Derek Hall's return. <laughs> yeah. Back. yeah, your boy's coming back, right? <laughs> what happened? He came back, and they optioned him. Uh, triple A, right? So yeah, he's not on the. Yeah, Cody Clemens stole that job. I mean, big time. He had that crazy ass catch Schiller. last night too. I feel like Derek Hall would not have made that catch. Yeah. He got that bat. I forget who hit that. Yeah, it's Maybe. kind of foot cool. I mean, as much as I would rather have Reese Hoskins in there, it is kind of nice having a, an actual defensive, plus defensive first yeah. baseman for the first time in like ever. Reese Hoskins would have yeah. fucked up. That's the first thing I thought of. I'm like, I miss Reese Hoskins from an offensive standpoint, but I could have bet money on that or another three shots that he would have fucked up some kind of play on defense last night because he's just unreliable as a glove, which is heartbreaking. You want him to get that in his game, but he hasn't shown any signs of life in that. Yeah, the Goldschmidt piece is interesting. Um, what I've been hearing is that the Phillies are looking to move Harper to first probably sometime next month after the All-Star break. And then if they have Schwarber at DH, they'll look to trade for a left fielder, some sort of right-handed like Cody Bellinger. I've heard him get floated around too. Where's he at? The Do- uh, the, 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 the Cubs. Dodgers. The Cubs. Yeah. But that thing... Another funny pattern I've looked at, too, with the Phillies is that they like to bring in guys two-by-two two from teams, right? You look at how they brought in Harper, right? They brought in Harper the one year, then they also got in Schwarber. They both played in Washington. Now, granted, Trey Turner did as well, but I'm not there yet. Then you look at Castellanos. They bring Castellanos from where? The Reds. Who else did they get again? Brandon Marsh. They were teammates on the Reds. They got two I there. what Brandon was in. Was what Brandon always an angel? He was a Red? Or with the Angels, I mean. Well, whatever. Oh, they oh. got Syndergaard and Wet Brandon from the Angels. <laughs> like. All right, yeah. double dip that. Well, that yeah. killed that whole theory then. Whatever. But and anyway, double dip. Then you got, you, got yeah, Trey, you were still right. You got Trey Turner. You got Trey Turner. And then you bring in Cody after that. They like the people bringing people that have played with each other. And I yeah. can see that. Yeah. Bellinger's been better this away. year. Um, he's got a 782 OPS right now. Last season, you know, it was only... He let, Last two seasons before ass. that was terrible, was, yeah. Yeah, he was ass last year. But yeah, not, I mean, you know. That could solve the outfield issue. But you don't need to be great when you pick up a, a person that way with this team. Like, There's already the set people that are going to do their job. It'd be just a nice comfort thing to have at the bottom of the lineup. Yeah, and a better and a defensive. Field. Yeah. Exactly. Because Schwarber, man, like... It's kind of painful watching him just like try to make plays defensively. Sometimes it's painful watching him trot around the base when he hits a home run. Yeah. He's got that Babe Ruth run, just kind of, you know, just a little <laughs> fat man run. Yeah. Well, anything else on the Phils? Nah, I mean, they've got presumably this game against Atlanta if it happens. Atlanta tomorrow, then the Mets come in. Uh, you'd obviously like to see them win four of six between those six games um, and make the Mets even more irrelevant. I think it's been kind of fun to watch the Mets flounder this year so after they spent so much money. Yeah. Lost again today. Nice. Big game, 10-8. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, if the Phillies can just knock them back even farther in the standings, that would be incredible. Especially to see all those sorry Mets fans go home sad because you no, know they're going to come down here. This they weekend. always do. It's yeah. very annoying. And we've just been awful against them the past few years. So it'd be nice to finally turn things around. You know, send, uh, you know, get Mr. Met putting his head in the oven, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so the Sixers may uh, not be doing anything tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe they will. We're back to poking the rock. It's like, oh, all right, well, yeah, yeah. do anything. Do or something. Do anything. Make, even just do some crazy trade offers. I'd be happy with like a rumor, but there's, they're just sitting on their hands right now, it looks like. When the rest of the league for believe that was in the playoffs, all those teams are actively pursuing people or at least putting packages together or making phone calls and you know, yeah. how much I mean, can we talk about? I they really about? only have the one. I mean, Tobias is kind of their only real chip to to put in right now. I mean, I don't know what they don't really have a whole lot of other assets they can trade. They pretty much have like no. 
picks between all the acquisitions they've made the past few years. So, And apparently we're getting calls about Tobias, but um, we're not biting. So um, Keith Pompey, who um, the illustrious reporter for the <laughs> Philadelphia Inquirer, who I, I think is better at reporting things that have already happened than breaking stories, um, but, he, but he has said that sources say that the uh, Cavs, Pacers, and Pistons have all contacted Daryl Morey about Tobias, but he's given them an outrageous asking price, so um, they're at an impasse right now. So that shows me he's really not in a rush to make this move, um, if Keith can be believed, <laughs> um, and uh, is maybe comfortable kind of doing the Ben Simmons thing and saying, we'll wait and get something better later. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I think that... Uh... I was kind of hoping Tobias would go tomorrow just because, yeah, maybe you get a couple solid players. Maybe you get a pick you can use tomorrow in a play or something, something to that effect. I don't know what Daryl could be asking for from these mediocre teams that have a lot of young players and a lot of a lot of uh, draft picks to give up. You would think the Sixers would want someone a little more ready-made, but who knows? I think... All signs are pointing to Tobias still being here after tomorrow. I think the other interesting thing is all signs are pointing to James Harden officially coming back. It hasn't been made official, but it seems like that's a scuttlebutt around the league is that he's coming back. What do you all think of that? I think we've all kind of come to terms with it probably happening. Yeah. How's that make everyone feel? I mean, I've been on team bring him back the whole time, so I'm totally fine with it. Hopefully it's a, a reasonable deal. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, I think that any, any version of this, any like realistic version of this team next year without him on it was probably not going to be as good, no matter which way you slice it. And as much as the, as much as it sucked the way the playoffs ended, they did have a really, uh, great regular season and, um, you know, you just got to hope that they can figure out a way to actually get it done in the postseason. Yeah, I mean, like you said, we're better with him than we are without him. I don't, I don't really care too much about it. I mean, it's great. We're gonna have, you know, him and Embiid again doing their thing. I think uh, with Nick Nurse there, it'll be hopefully a different dynamic of the offense and team when they do start playing. I'd be curious to see if, you know, we saw late in the year where he was butting heads with uh, Doc because of the way that they were running the team and how they had to figure things out. So. You know, you throw a new coach in there. It would be ideal for Harden to come in with an open mind and wanting to figure things out and try to get to that next step before he retires or whatever. But at the same time, history has shown that Harden is true to his name and is a hard-headed guy. So, like, you know, I, I don't know. It's hard to say that it'd be a plus or a minus late in the season. It's a definite plus as the, for the team to stay together that way. But as a unit to win games and make a deep run in the playoffs, I think that's to be determined. Yeah, I think like two things. First, I mean, the Nick Nurse thing, and also I think the way the Sixers at least view it internally is um, that they see Maxie as a guy who's improved every year. So um, they're not looking at it as, oh, we're just bringing the same guy back to the same thing. They say, we got a new coach. We got a player who we think is going to be better, um, you know, than he was last year because he's still very young and developing. Um, also, I think, I mean, I was also like Trevor always for bringing Harden back. And I think people get like Harden confused a lot. And they're like, he just doesn't care about winning. It's like, no, he, he thinks this is a job and he likes going to the strip club. But like, you know, there, there is a middle ground between like being like Jimmy Butler, like a psycho for the game up dribbling at 2 AM for no reason. <laughs> and be, and like being, you know, somebody who just straight up doesn't care if they win or lose. And I think Harden is in that middle and, you know, he, he wants to win. He also has other interests. Um, so I'm happy with this move, and I, you know, I, I don't think just because it hasn't worked the last two years means that it necessarily can't work this year, especially if we, like, make an innovative trade with Toby. Yeah, I think initially I was very much concerned about bringing him back because, yeah, the, the issue is you don't want to give him four years, $50 million a year. You can't have all that money tied up into a guy for four years who, at the end of that contract, is going to be 38 but if they can bring him back on, you know, a one plus one where you give him a year, give him an option year, or just do two years, 40 million, 50 million, whatever, I can live with that a little bit more. It's easier to stomach. I do still have some apprehension, Pat, to your point about the, the new coach and 
we know that him and Doc didn't get along. How's he coincide with Nick Nurse? He doesn't seem like a Nick Nurse guy to me in the slightest. But uh, at the same time, having a new voice maybe it inspires him to, to, to listen a little bit and to really sort of buy in. So if it's a team-friendly deal, which it seems like it's going to have to be, I think he's realized he's not going to get a max. and I'm happy with it. But uh, if it's anything beyond two years, $50 million a year, ugh. Also, I'm okay with, you know, if Harden comes back and he wants the offense to not run through and beat anymore, which is totally fine. I think that's what they need to kind of do, whether it's with Maxi moving forward, which is the future, or with Harden a little bit this year. Maybe you have, like, Harden kind of bringing Maxi under his wing, maybe teaching him some shit he did in Houston when he did run the team that way and – they had tremendous success within the regular season, at least, um, as, a, as a point scorer. But I think that it ha- it's a three-folded thing, right? How is he going to work out with the coach? Um, is he willing to change a little bit? And can he help bring up these young guys that clearly are going to take his spot within the next year or so? I mean, it's unrealistic for Harden to believe that after this season, he's going to go somewhere and take a team to the chip because he hasn't done it yet. And last year was one of his better chances, I guess, at least with the Sixers. I think that everybody has to have an open mind about him coming back. And I think that we're excited to have him back. We're happy to have him back if he does choose to stay with the Sixers. But I think that I don't want to see the old Houston teams where Harden is trying to do that here now, where he's going to score 40 points a game. And, you know, I don't want that. At the same time, Embiid can't be running the floor the whole time or, like, being the main point scorer. So... It just depends on how they shape out. I'm glad if we bring him back, that's a great move. We're better with him than without him, but I have a big asterisk on if he does come back, what that looks like. Maybe he needs to uh, come out with like a different, a new, do you think maybe he'll come out with a new wine between now and I was just going to say the same thing. Yeah. Like he had the, you know, the one. He needs to come out with a white like, wine, right? Yeah, yeah, like a cab. Does like he have I a rosé? Just like a Cabernet Sauvignon or whatever. Fucking love rosé. Um, yeah, nice. I think, yeah, rosé, that seems like very hardened type drink. Yeah. Um, nice summer wine. You're on the boat. You're at the strip club. Yeah, exactly. A rosé could be nice. Uh, yeah, Americans like rosé. Um, Yo, what, what, was his wine good? It was fine. We tried it, right? It wasn't. Uh, yeah, it wasn't like bad. It wasn't anything amazing. I'm not that I'm. I'm not some kind of fucking uh, sommelier or whatever the fuck. But like, it had a great you know, start and a rough was, finish. It's all. Yeah, real, 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 yeah, real, uh, yeah, real uh, soft nose or whatever. And then a, a, a real bitter sort of aftertaste. Yeah. That sort of lift you. Couldn't quite put your finger end. on it, but yeah. <laughs> But yeah, he's got. I think that's the only. Is that the only kind he has? I think. I think it's just the I one. I've so. only seen that one. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a. Yeah, he's got a. He's got to come up with some new shit. Yeah, and I guess I'm. I'm a poor judge of whether a wine's good or not. Like I think I liked it, but you could put a ten dollar bottle of wine in front of me, a thirty dollar bottle of wine, <laughs> yeah. an eighty dollar bottle of wine. It's all gonna taste the same to I think me. As long so. as it doesn't give you a hangover the next day, it's at least a decent bottle of wine. Yeah, that's true. The ten dollar bottle of wine, it might taste the same as the fifty dollar bottle, but that ten dollar bottle of wine, you're gonna wake up with a mean mm-hmm. headache. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, that's like, the biggest uh, tell. Like Mad Dog. Oh, well, <laughs> that's not even ten dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yo, they still make. Do they st- still make Mad Dog? They make, still Mad, make dog. Mad Dog. Yeah. yeah, I haven't had it in a long time. But well, what was the other one? Night, night train. train, dude. Night they train. still make Night Train. Night used to be able to like buy it for three dollars a bottle. <laughs> yeah. I remember when the, they had like the Trader Joe's wine store, uh, and you could buy like the Trader Joe's brand uh, wine that was the, like three bucks. The a two, bottle the two buck chuck. Yeah, exactly. What was that like? I don't, I don't think I ever had. You, that. you know, it's funny. Was it, people used to say there was like this urban myth. Like, so the guy who made this, he divorced his wife, um, and like he gets to keep the winery, but she gets all the profits. So he's selling it for two dollars at a loss to like fuck her over. It's like, <laughs> this is, so, so, right? that, that was like all this urban myth to like to come up with the idea like this is actually really good wine. It's like no, it's not, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, You're selling it at market value. Yeah. yeah, all right. Damn. A little wine talk on the city wide pod. Look at that refined. Yeah, 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 yeah we're we're branching very, out very from our shots here. and our beers. <laughs> Yeah, one of these. Yeah, one of these days we're gonna have to just. Well, it's sit amazing when we start the podcast without three shots of rye. How we now we're talking about wine, sophisticated things. Yeah, we're classy <laughs> really turning up in this. Around. <laughs> hey man, pinky out. Pinky's <laughs> out, baby.
Ah, uh, fuck. Um, so is that about just about do it for the, the Sixers? Yeah, we'll have Not more, really plenty more to... Sixers to talk mm-hmm. about yeah, next week after the post draft, draft. Maybe some trades happen. We'll see. The Flyers continue flyering with uh, bringing John LeClaire into the front office. Another. Is he like a VP of strategy? Flyer. What is his title now? He's a like a bullshit special title. Special advisor yeah. to the GM. Yeah. He's you know a, a, a guy to hang out and bring some good vibes around. I guess I don't hate it. Mostly. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, I think Avery, you brought this up last week, where they're kind of just instead of having these fossils from the 70s and stuff at least they're bringing in former flyers that were here in like the 90s or the it's a little or better so yeah i mean you know 90s guy i'll take it seems like a good dude i don't know yeah i don't really he's, know what he's sort boys of... with keith jones pretty apparently, much yeah i mean apparently that's how it i, I was reading some today that's pretty much how this went down it was like uh it was like um Keith Jones got the job or something, and John LeClaire sends him a text, like, congratulating him. And then he just kind of read back, yo, you want to come too? <laughs> like, he's basically just yeah. was like, no, nah, I don't think it was literally, like, right <laughs> after. But, like, in a few days, he was like, hey, maybe you should, uh, maybe I can get you a job here or whatever. He said, fuck it. Yeah, why not? Yeah, it reeks of a very flyers move, but at the same time. What the hell? I mean, I liked John and Claire growing up. Was, of orange. was was one of my favorite flyers. And, yeah, probably uh, was my favorite player growing up. So, I mean, it's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what the role is exactly, but uh, he'll be better than these fossils from the 70s and 80s. So, I'm cool with it. And I think that uh, they're doing a better job of filling out their staff than Chuck Fletcher did. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. This looks... Looks promising. A lot, lot remains to be seen. Draft is one week from tonight. Oh, yeah. We'll be able to be mm-hmm. live, dude. Yeah. Oh, shit. The pick is in. Have you guys looked at any of these? Not that I'm like any sort of expert in like NHL prospects, but do you guys uh, looked at any of these guys? Have a, have anyone you, you're hoping they can snag at seven? I made a few calls. Uh, you know, the guys seem okay. Not really super impressed. They seem a little immature for me. But you did more than Chuck yeah, Fletcher. Talking, I'm not a big hockey guy, guy, so I don't really know a whole lot. You know, they they saw right through my bullshit. They were like, who the fuck are you? But <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think that we have, what, two picks in the first round now? Seven, Seven and 22. 22. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, that's exciting enough. I feel like whenever any team has two picks, it gives you flexibility, whether you sit with those picks or use them with – Maybe a guy who knows Carter Hart. Who I'm not gonna put a bet on that, but you know, you, you want to do three more to get, shots to get up in there. Well, that'd be a fun live podcast. Fuck it, I'll do it. But <laughs> I think that I think that it just makes it more interesting than if we had sat at 22 and been like, oh, okay, we have a whole long draft. And I feel like the the rate of talent probably significantly falls after the top five. Yeah. But now having seven and 22, it gives you that leeway to get into the top five or. Do something interesting. So that's at least makes draft night more exciting. And I feel like the Flyers haven't really had that in a, in a good bit. Yeah, it seems like, I mean, pretty much every mock draft I've looked up has one through five, almost all the same. So then after that is when it kind of gets, you know, like a shot in interesting. Dark. You yeah. don't know who's going to be available. I think if uh, this guy, Zach Benson, is there, that's who I'd like them to take. He's like a left wing, kind of like smaller, but... Seems like a really good creator. Um, the guy who I think a lot of people have their eyes on is this dude, um, uh, Ryan Leonard. That's who's been mocked to the Flyers. The mocks. Yeah, I've well, seen. he's a very he's like the most he's like the flyer guy in the draft. Mm-hmm. But in that he like hits a lot and stuff. He's very physical, but he's also really good. Like I wouldn't. Yeah, he's a center, right? Big yeah, strong center. Or, yeah. This hasn't listed as a right wing, but I think he might. I mean, most of these guys might. Also be able to yeah, play they can center, probably play a little center. But uh, yeah, he's another U.S. guy. I know the Flyers love taking U.S. guys. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Sure. Yeah, I still want them to get Mikoff. Mishkov. Mishkov. Yeah. I don't think he's slipping. I at this point, I'd be pretty shocked if he's there. I mean, yeah, if he is, then absolutely they should take him. We had seven. I mean, yeah, it seems uh, the mocks I've seen. Have him going go top four. five. Yeah. So, so say they're not too to far go out. Go so. to the Sharks at four. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Who's five? The the Canadians, Canadians. right? Yeah, so like. I'm seeing a lot of Will Smith, which mm-hmm. is funny. There's a guy that would be Will hysterical. Smith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 come on. Yeah. Like, you got to give that guy to us. But 
But yeah, I mean, maybe, Pat, to your point, they find a way to pair 7, 22, and a second or third rounder I this year or next year. Or play I, don't, I don't know that they're going to be able to move up from 7, but I do think that they're going to have an additional first-round pick on draft night. I think they're going to trade a player and get back into the first round. Who do you they think have they're so going to trade? Um, I mean... Uh, Kevin Hayes. I mean, Kevin Hayes is almost certainly going to be a first rounder for Hayes. Eh, like, I mean, not a later one, maybe or Konechny. I'd, be, I'd like to see Konechny the stay. But you could yeah, trade the guy that me. plays with a lot of. But uh, I mean, they're they're saying um, the apparently what's been coming out of the, the Flyers is that the only person they consider untouchable is uh, Cutter Gauthier, their first round pick from last year's draft. So everyone's on the table. Yeah, and this is a deep draft. They're a rebuilding team. This is like a draft where you would like to have an extra guy, you know, with some upside. Try to like have as many opportunities to like hit a home run with one of these guys. Well, that shows also a lot of faith. They seem as though they've did, done their homework, at least like to Avery and Trevor's point in bringing these younger guys into the organization to help with the developmental side of the house. So if they somehow get three first round draft picks this year and they're able to develop one of them, that is a huge hit in recent memory in yeah. Flyers history anyway. So hopefully that they've done about it the fir- how you would like to see an organization do it, right? They got the guys in, that, in the organization first, in the front of the house, developmental player guys, trainers, things like that. Then you look at the draft and see if you can get these young bucks up there to play at, at the NHL caliber. So I think that they're in a good position, no matter what they do. Similar to the Eagles, where you have so many picks in the first round that you're going to hopefully hit maybe not a home run, but at least a double, you know, maybe get someone decent that you can develop and, and build a team around for future. Yeah, which they haven't really done that too often. So no. I, I think that regardless of what happens thus far, the Flyers have had a very strong offseason and a good draft, whether it's two picks, three picks, or somehow trading up for their guy. Just makes it that much more sweeter. When's the draft? Next what? Next Wednesday. Okay, Next we, we'll, we'll probably be potting. Yeah, you could probably watch the beginning of it at least. I am willing to make another bet. That oh, shit. Okay. I, I'll do another three-shot bet that Carter Hart gets traded draft day. Oh, dude, it's not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to do it. You just said everyone's on the table except uh, well, but whatever. Do, but Okay, well, I, I mean, well, if you want to do it, you can do it. But I'm just saying that one of the reasons why they're not going to trade Carter Hart yet is because of this whole like hockey uh, Canada investigation thing that hasn't what? quite wrapped up yet. You don't know about any of this shit? No, I don't know about that shit. <laughs> Come out. I learned about hockey there, here. Well, it was like years ago. Um, oh, with what's this? The, Way back the, when. The like, junior national team uh, got it. Like a, there, there was like these like – sexual assault allegations that went around and like Carter Hart was on the team at oh the time. okay I didn't know that shit so it doesn't, not, not to say that like Carter Hart is directly implicated in any of this stuff but like they're not gonna teams aren't gonna trade for him until all these investigations are finalized cause he's a creep too well, well I don't we, think we, he's we a creep <laughs> I don't I don't think so but well then we I table that bet up the te- these other teams don't know so yet. Yeah, I won't. I'm not going to force you to do that because that's what last last week when I <laughs> you were holding on to that shit the whole time. Well, well she, she the first time the first time I hadn't really thought of that, but since then I was like I was like, oh yeah, of course he's not going to get traded because of that mm-hmm. thing. Little yeah. did I know he had a little Joe Powell. You want to throw another name out there, maybe? Mm, I'll get. Nah, I don't have a right name. <laughs> I don't know. But not to say the bets are off the table. We still have some time on the pod. I don't yeah, think it's something times. stupid to bet. I'll throw one out there because I don't want to see Konechny go. I don't think that he's traded. But I'll do three shots if Konechny gets traded during if the draft. If he does? Yeah. If he right. does. Write that down. It doesn't. It's it's more likely than Carter Hart getting traded, but I don't know if it's super likely. On the board. But, but yeah. Anyone listening? No, Dean, you always hold me accountable for my dumb bets. This one isn't quite as dumb as, say, drinking gravy or chugging a, a pint of milk. But, uh, yeah, hold me to it. If Konechny gets traded on draft night, three shots of, let's do something not very good. Let's do... Malort. <laughs> I don't. I can't get Malort than a week. I'd have to fly to Chicago and fly back. Mm. Um... Really bad whiskey. We can do that. That I can find easily. I probably had that shit at home. Yeah. yeah some some Heaven Hill. 
Yeah, yeah, that that's appropriate. Hey, it's the citywide special. Heaven Hill is at a Ray's, part of the citywide at Ray's. I thought I did Canadian it. whiskey. Oh. The L Bar Heaven Hill used to be the the shot at the L Bar. Right. So yeah, three shots of Heaven Hill, which means I'm gonna have to buy a lot of Heaven Hill to do that. But uh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys see the new unis? You like the new unis? Oh hell yeah, I, I did. like them. The new... I don't hate them. I well, like yeah. the well, they got they, they took the they, yeah they brought it back to the the proper shade of orange. We're not like the fucking Halloween flyers anymore. What is it called? What what is the like specific burnt orange? Burnt orange. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, yeah. definitely I like much it. better. The the numbers on the sleeves are a little weird because that's no, something I don't like that outline. Yeah, they, they look they looks like uh, when people get those like knockoff mm-hmm. jerseys from China, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Someone that works it looks like uh, when you buy a jersey from like Foreman Mills. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Because it's not it's like just a black like twenty two. They all just, yeah, they all just look like a jersey that they bought from some guy selling them out of his <laughs> trunk in the parking lot of the Wells Fargo. Center. Hey, that's Philly, man. I did get <laughs> someone's card at the draft party. I got someone's card that sells jerseys. He was like, "You looking for a jersey?" I'm like, "No." He's like, well, "Here's my card." I'm like, "All right." We do anything, yeah, baseball, sport, any any sport. I was like, I oh, man, I appreciate that. Thanks. <laughs> the one thing I do hate is that fucking uh, Blue Cross logo that's on oh. there. Now. You had to know they were going to get some. Well, sort of I don't. Thing. I'm not like b- butthurt about the fact that they have like a sponsor. I always knew that was going to happen, but the fact that it's like of course fucking it's a blue, medical sponsor. It's like it's like doesn't mesh with the rest of the colors. That's a good like point. if they just made it white or or something, it's like dude. Like, it looks like the uh, fucking like. Uh, but not batting practice, but it looks like their training jersey when it's that big and bright. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I get what you mean. I don't like it. Yeah, I wish they had just kind of integrate, like, whatever ads are inevitable, but I wish they had kind of made it work a little better yeah, what's, design-wise. What's the alternate road jersey? Is that the black ones? It's still just the same black ones, it's, uh, which I don't like. I don't think they're very good, but uh, did They didn't make any changes to that? I could have swore that they If would... they did, they were very subtle. Okay. It's just burnt orange now is a little outline. Gotcha. See, I always like the black jerseys, but... Uh... That one Winter Classic or whatever they did with the all black. Oh, that was I, badass. Yeah. I like that shit a lot. The one they had when they think when they played the Rangers, those ones. Yeah. That shit was so... tight. I like that a lot. But, uh, hey, man... It's a new era of Flyers hockey, although they're probably going to be pretty bad this year. At least they'll be bad with a purpose. But they're our, yeah. our bad team, though. It's okay. Yeah, but when when they were Chuck Fletcher's Flyers, they were not our bad mm-mm, team. Mm-mm. I'll watch the Flyers again this year just because. I'll hey. support Danny Briere, see what he's got in the tank, yeah. see what they did. Check him out. Yeah, I, just, I couldn't bring myself to watch that team last year for a number of reasons. Pathetic. Um, new uniforms, say. I'll be a little more excited. Yeah. Should uh, be a little more exciting. Might have some younger guys coming up. And, yeah, exactly. They'll be they'll be bad, but fun, maybe. Especially once we get that first round number one pick for yeah, Carter once we Hart. Trade up. Yeah, yeah once, we, <laughs> once, we, once we trade Carter Hart and our first two picks to move up for Connor Bedard, then, uh, yeah, then it's on. Hey, we'll put Danny, Bre- Danny Briere on a pedestal for that, man. <laughs> All right, so I guess that just about does it for the Flyers. So I guess we can move on to our um, movie. Oh, man. <laughs> this shit was brutal. So I guess we should have so, kind of explained yeah, the, this, so we, this movie thing we want to do. Yeah, so we've been thinking, uh, you know, especially during some of these weeks where the sports schedule is light, uh, we could do, we thought maybe it would be a fun idea to do some movie reviews of uh, sports movies that have come out and the first on the docket first on the docket is 80 for Brady the <laughs> oh by request God. we should say yeah. I feel like yeah well this was <laughs> this was my idea um, so you know I'm, I'm sorry Avery and Pat and Marlon for making you watch this but um, you know I don't know what did you <laughs> Usually that's what Hannah says before you have to watch like Gossip Girl or Sex in the City for the fifth time in a row. Like, <laughs> oh, I'd rather watch either of those. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I will watch that on repeat after watching that fucking movie. Yeah. I mean, well, the reason, and I mean, the main reason we, we brought Marlon for this episode is because Marlon is a uh, a despite being a very big Philly fan, obviously is a big uh, Tom Brady fan. So maybe I don't know if maybe we should start out by. To do the Marlon struggle explaining session. himself. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, I'll, I'll explain myself then. If you have any questions, I'll answer them. But, a lot, a but, lot of but, but look, guys, so like, <laughs> like the, the thing is, 
you know, you you want to like put yourself in the company like the New York Jets and be like, oh, I hate Tom Brady. He's he's our big enemy. It's like, no, he like he's you know he's just a cool guy who's won seven Super Bowls. Who else has done that? That's awesome. And you know, and guess what? We beat him in a Super Bowl. And uh, I, I gotta tell you, like I was walking down Broad Street, you know, celebrating at like two a.m. the night we won the Super Bowl, and I see a bunch of guys come up the street and they're all going, "Fuck Tom Brady." That's not us. We're winners now. We don't chant the other teams, guys. I mean, we let's go Eagles. Anyways, um, so yeah, Tom Brady's like, you got to watch the greatest quarterback of all time. You're gonna tell your kids about this shit. Um, I don't know what to say. I like, I've never rooted for his team particularly. I'm just, I, I respect what he does, and I don't see why he should be like an enemy of the Eagles. Like we did play him in two Super Bowls, but we won one of them. So um, we lost the other one. Well, we lost the other one. By the way, that was also. I mean, that wasn't Tom Brady. That was Donovan McNabb. No, I know. They got to pause at that okay. before we all get heated here. I don't think we could blame one person for that Super Bowl. We could, you know, it's more mm. than that. We're more really that. litigating a Super Bowl from 20 years ago. <laughs> I, right I would gladly do that. We did like had no Eagles news to talk I'm about just this saying, week. I think to your point about not being able to say fuck Tom Brady, I think is a little bit too premature. Obviously, every, the debate is always, you know, is he the GOAT quarterback? Obviously, he's going to be in that debate because he's got the most Super Bowl rings and all the other stats and all that shit. I get it. However, it's all right to give the man a couple of years out of retirement to still give him some shit and still hate his guts. Like, it doesn't, it no skin off my nose. I think, yes, if you're a troop of football fan, you respect his game and all that, obviously. At the same time, though, it's the way that he did that shit. It's different than when you look at guys like Joe Montana or Peyton Manning or things like that. Tom Brady has an essence of just douchebag to him that I just think other quarterbacks don't have. And I will always hate Tom Brady. One of my favorite things about the post Super Bowl 52 celebrations was, remember when they had, uh, they were using those like trash trucks to (laughs) sort of block off parts of the Broad Street or whatever. Yeah. And someone had spray painted uh, fuck Tom B on it, but the B was too close to the Tom, so it just said fuck tomb. (laughs) 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 And there was like, I think it was like dead or something had an article <laughs> recapping the, the chaos after all and the head the, the headline was just enter fuck too <laughs> philly has reached a new level yeah. yeah anyway my point is we we are just such a cool great team that tom brady you know isn't even a rival to us um he's just a guy we beat along the way and um and, and other than that i you know i kind of i lived in new york for a while i kind of enjoyed him terrorizing the jets every year um so they, they, but not the giants no, 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 and that's the other thing. I, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys were part of this or knew anybody. Do people who were rooting for the Giants in those uh, 2007, oh, I definitely 2011. wasn't 2007. The, the, come on, man. I was. I was. You, how can you, yeah. how could you root for the Giants in the Super Bowl? Fuck Tom Brady. That's why. What do you that's, mean? This is wild. This is, this is so much worse than being like an Eagles fan who likes Tom Brady. I don't think so. I think that as a divisional fan, I think that at that time period, especially when they were like undefeated and all mm-hmm. that bullshit, like. I'd rather root for doofy ass Eli Manning. Let him see if he pulls this shit out, and he did. It was amazing to Root, watch. Rooting for the New York Giants. Hey, I wasn't man. like not. All, trust me now. Let's recalibrate here. We're not like root for him all season. Obviously, it was a long season, but when it comes down to the Super Bowl, I just don't like Tom Brady. So I'd rather see anybody beat him. And if it was the Giants, good for them. Whatever. Like you know, they did it. We got ours. We've been back. We've been way better than they have the last recent years, and we always owned. The Giants, when we saw them in person, anyway. So I was like, I'm at peace with that. But I could not support Tom Brady in that, in those, in either of them, both. So what I'll, what I'll say to um, rooting against them in 2007 is I was still upset about losing in 2004. I couldn't bring myself to root for them to win another Super Bowl after they beat us and won three years prior. Cheating that was ass. that was a lot of my reason for it. Then 2011, I think I was more indifferent about who won. Um, but then more recently, rooting against Tom Brady was a little easier because of the whole Deflategate thing. I couldn't bring myself to root for someone that was caught cheating. You know what I mean? Oh, like, I kind of loved the Deflategate did, thing. Did, did, I gotta you, say, I'm not, I'm not as much of a Tom Brady guy as Marlon, but I, I always was kind of on like the Tom Brady side during that. <laughs> no, because because there was no cheating. Yeah, well, also, it's like if the, the, the fucking official is touching the ball every play, and if you can't, if it's not enough to them to notice anything, like, is it really a, like an unfair advantage? I don't know. Like, it just seems like a very, like, if, like, if you can, like, de- deflate the ball by, like, this tiny little bit, and it, and it helps, then, like, I don't know. I gotta, you gotta hand it to him. Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> but I think, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, Tom Brady will always have. 
the mystique about Tom Brady, you know. I think that at the same time, people just hate him because they hate Tom. Like, when someone gets to be that great, he didn't have the cool swag like MJ did winning all those rings. He just is a generic, doofy dude who happened to be able to throw the ball in a great system with arguably, you could say, a whole, you know, is it the coach, is it him? Then he goes to Bay and wins it, so it could be that, you know, who knows. But I don't know. Like, I'm over it. I feel like his whole career has been, he's the man, he's the greatest. Like, all right, man. Like, yeah, when he gets in the Hall of Fame, I'll be like, yeah, wow, that was great. I'm so glad we get to watch that. But, like, as of now, nah, I'm missing with that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, well, look, it's it's already starting to happen now to Mahomes, too, who everyone was rooting to beat Tom Brady a couple years ago. Oh, yeah, he's now new, now yeah. everyone hates Mahomes. Yeah. Um, so it's going to happen. What happens mm-hmm. to everybody? But that's what got us to this movie. Yes. 80 for Brady. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Brady definitely dropped a peg in my book for, for producing Big such time. an abhorrent movie. Oh, you got all that money and that's what you came up with? Wait, he, Although, pro- wait, he produced it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And now I, I, take back every, I take back everything I just said about him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I mean, you got, a, you got like a producer credit. It's probably like, you know, when they give people like an executive producer credit just for being friends with... Someone who's making the movie. It's, he was, though, was the main guy. producer of that shit. Yeah, that's what he said. But I, mean, also, I, doubt, I don't think he was the guy like on the phones with the craft services. <laughs> yeah. And the yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will say, though, shout out Sally Fields. I always love seeing her in a movie, so it's good to see yeah. her. You know, I well, like that. We, like, uh, so my my like initial reaction to this this movie is that this what this felt like to me was the death rattle of a declining empire. <laughs> this was like I mean, you're like in like I mean it kind of reminded me how like it, like if you study like ancient Rome how like they used to have um, when they would have like chariot races and gladiator mm-hmm. duels and stuff they would have that kind of stuff like you know once every two weeks or a couple times a month <laughs> or something and then as the, as things started to go south. They would start having these events like every other day or whatever to sort of distract the populace from how bad things were going. And that was kind of what this felt like. It was like, you know, this is a team that, uh, you know, tried to bring back the corpse of uh, Cam Newton as their quarterback. And just, uh, you know, Bill Belichick just does not seem like the same kind of force anymore without Tom Brady. And it was like, let's make this movie to remind everyone of our glorious triumphs. <laughs> was that, remember 28 also, to like, 3? Yeah, it's like, come yeah, on remember, now. Well, Yeah, well, that was wild to me that they made it, like, I didn't realize that it was about, uh, just because of the timing of the movie, I, I thought that this was going to be about the... Eagles. The, the, or I thought it was going to be about 53, which was like one of the most boring games oh, ever. That game oh, against ass. the Rams? <laughs> yeah, 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 you, that can't, shit you can't have that game in a movie. That I, game yeah. I guess I, did, I didn't think the score of the game was going to actually feature as much as it did, but we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. That shit was... That Super Bowl sucked. That was a very boring Super Bowl. But I will say, though, watching the movie, horrific. It was very boring. It was like, just try too hard. My, my favorite scene, I will say, though, is when the one uh, older chick like went up into the... They were in like, that party... Oh, like she got high, and all the Guy Fieri's were in there. <laughs> yeah, she, dude, Every, everybody that's was just, a classic. Movie everybody movie. was just Guy Fieri. That shit was cracking me up. Oh my it's god! It's always a classic move in movies where the way they depict someone being like high on weed is. I was going to say like, the same like thing. Like they just smoked PCP, right? And something. it's always instant. It's never that right. Great. Yeah, dude, I got so mad at I, that. She was, she was eating edibles too. She wasn't even smoking. I mean, yeah. right? I wish it was that quick. I'm like, fuck. Like they're lucky as shit, but it never is that way. You take one. 30 minutes goes by, you're like, well, I'm also taking another one. This shit, they Then you're like, oh, fuck, I'm, I'm in too deep. That, they take it, they're like, wait, that wasn't a gummy bear? And then they walk five feet, and they're like, out of their mind. Yeah, she's ripped. Yeah, I'm like, come on now. By the way, this, this movie has Tom Brady in the name. He's apparently produced it. Guy Fieri like featured more heavily in it than right. Tom Brady. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> right? I was thinking, like, why is he in this yeah. featured so prominently? I also thought that she would call her fanny pack a strap-on. So she was like, Guy, you have my strap-on. And then some, someone yeah, else so comes, comes out of the body. Out of the and the body. he's like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, that was kind yeah. of funny. But they were... They were I'm not giving it credit as a good movie, but they were like parts hand, of it were pretty well done. A handful done. of scenes, I'm like, that's kind well, of the, that's well, funny. like the, here's the, the one thing that, that, that bothered me about it the most was the fact that like I don't I didn't like hate the premise of it. Like it's you know it's these all like these old women who are all going through various things and feel like they have this like one last chance to do this like fun thing or whatever. But the thing that killed it for me is that it's like 
t- t- trying to tell that story and having like the, the dynasty Patriots as the team is like the worst creative choice you could make. Because it's like a team that all these ladies have already seen win the Super Bowl like five times or whatever. Right. Yeah, like, they should have yeah. done the Eagles. Exactly. Well, they're, 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 they had made it about the and Eagles. And they bought past the Eagles, Eagles Super Bowl. And it would have been just of as good of a... Because they lost that one. They, I'm just saying, they it's really frustrating it, as fuck. Called it fuck Tom Brady. They could have called it holes for foals. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> no, you and, and also like they're 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 kind of like doing the beats of like an underdog comeback story, but like even like the like the announcers are the game, like yeah, the Falcons like have no business even like trying to beat the page. Like like they're, it's very clear even in the movie world that like this team was like the heavy favorite to begin with. So yeah, I did love how the uh, that like. Um radio show guys that kept cutting through like 50 times through the whole movie mm-hmm. had all had all that like draft king stuff in the back <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's like i don't know if that shit would all have been there in uh 2017 or whatever no yeah, that's a good point the other thing i thought was funny about this was like how like sally field's character is just so kind of like out of, it was like i feel like they, they just like gave up on trying to figure out what her character was like supposed to be. Was she going to leave her husband? Yeah. Was she not going to leave her husband? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just funny because like uh, all these other, they have a, like it's like Lily Tom Tomlin is like maybe has cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rita Moreno's character Mora has like her husband just died mm-hmm. and is trying to get over that. Jane Fonda is too horny uh, and has to <laughs> has to try to overcome her horniness. <laughs> and then. Sally Field's big thing that she has to overcome is like her husband's kind of annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's like, her, 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 it's like kind of a, a dweeb. I feel like That's her, a big her problem her, that she has. Her, her big crisis, like her her husband sent her an email and then called her and said, "Did you read my email?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was her big crisis during the movie. <laughs> And it was resolved with the one phone call. She was like, just give me some space. I'm at the Super Bowl. He's like, okay, yeah, love you. She's like, yeah, just love you. Just, I'll read it later. And that's it. <laughs> that was it. That was it was like, wow, great, cool. That like, was her hero's journey. All <laughs> right, that's it. Yeah. Meanwhile, there are other friends waiting on a test for cancer. The other one's like making out in the closet. Like the other one's like tripping balls, playing poker. Like, all right, that was it. But, you know, it was, I could, I guess maybe as a had, boss. When they had that, when, they have the Sally Field character do the, the hot sauce contest thing. Was, Dude, the thing about, about that is as they're doing it, right, it's like they're putting the hot sauce on themselves. You got to have those. If it's a contest, it's got to be pre-cooked be on. Pre-sauce. Right, yeah. yeah. You can't, they could just put like a tiny, tiny dab. In yeah, there. I had oh. that in my notes too. That, that wing eating contest was BS, yeah, it was bullshit. Dude. Yo, the, that NFL experience thing seemed fun though. Yeah, like that seemed cool time, as hell. Man. Like Big time. It's kind of kind of dumb to waste it on four old ladies, but uh, <laughs> whatever. the The other thing I had in my notes, man, is Marshawn Lynch needed to see more of him, dude. Oh, hell I yeah. was not expecting him yeah, to be in there at all. That was he's just sitting there player. playing poker, cool as hell. Did you see the wine glass full of Skittles? Yeah, <laughs> I, I missed that. I yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, that was. Yeah, cool. they needed to have him in there more. I think. I think he has a future in acting, personally. Like, not even, like... J- I fucking joking. love Marshawn Lynch. Like, he just has... He just can just be himself. He just needs more media time. I love whenever he's on any YouTube, on any commercial. Like, it's just golden TV. I love Marshawn. Yeah, was it last year or this past year when he did the Manning cast? Not in the movie, oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Where he was just drunk off Hennessy and just yeah. cursing his ass off. <laughs> yeah, they had, like, a pot. Like, oh, yeah. sorry, bro, bro. Yeah. You ever see the interview with that one guy? They're like, so... How does it feel when you have to, like, when you're running up against somebody and you run through somebody? Like, what's that feel? It's like, I'll tell you what, though. When you're going through somebody and you just run through their face over and over and over and over. And he says it, like, eight times. Like, <laughs> and over and over and over and over and over and over. And the guy's like, all right, I think we're done here. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. He's like, yeah, well, you know, just run through their fucking face. That's it. <laughs> I love him. Yeah, he was. Cameos. I, like, when I, uh, I, I was expecting to see more Gronk in this movie. I just feel he, like he was just, so creepy. He oh, was yeah. just there for like two seconds. But I, I, I like, cause I keep thinking that like they're trying to give him like an acting career or whatever. Cause Something ain't right with that guy. Cause he's like, in all those, uh, uh, USAA commercials where he tries to steal Valor. <laughs> <laughs> like the, you know, he's trying to get the veterans insurance. <laughs> Do you notice that they, they, they kind of toned down the, the valor stealing aspect act in a very subtle way? Because it used to be like he would like try to like, can I get the insurance or whatever? And they're like, no, you can't do it. And I swear to God, I feel like people must have called and complained and been like, that's oh, definitely that's disrespectful. Because now it's just him talking about it. Like he doesn't. I'm try sure. To, yeah. 
I wish there was like. I would have loved it to be like some kind of little like t- web series television show where it's all just about Gronk trying to steal Valor. <laughs> like, so like, uh, like he just goes to like an army surplus store and gets a jacket and has like his chest decorated in medals that he got at Halloween Adventure. <laughs> trying to try, go on, trying to get like a like a ten percent discount at Burger King. <laughs> like, like the, like the 16 year old kid is like, sir, I know that you're, uh, you know, Super Bowl winning quarter or uh, Super Bowl winning tight end Rob Gronkowski. They're like, sir, that one, <laughs> that one medal says sheriff. That's not yeah. even like a real medal. Got it out of a cereal box. Yeah. <laughs> Look, kid, I didn't, I didn't watch my brothers get chopped to bits in the jungles of Saigon yeah. just so you could sit here and disrespect me. You say, oh, that's just the old CTE again. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, all in all. It was a movie, I guess. You know, it was not the best, but I mean, I fell asleep once. <laughs> the bar has been in. set, and I think that we have only up to go. Well, which le- is good. leaving it, leaving it, there's two points I really got to get out here. Leaving aside that it just generally wasn't a good movie. Number one, the so like I don't want to be mean to old ladies, but they're fake fans. They they only became fans because they couldn't change the channel like that. that yeah, what the, the hell is that? Yeah, and and like and this you know this movie is actually like based on even though nothing in it actually happened, it's based on these like five old ladies who were like had like a Patriots watching club for 60 years these ladies in the movie they have never watched a Patriots game in their life and they got stuck on the channel and they said uh, oh well let's just leave it on anyways because he's cute even though like Tom Brady's wearing a helmet you can't even see his face R.I.P. Uh, Drew Bledsoe again taking yes. an L yeah yeah. so that's my number one thing <laughs> is that they're fake fans and then by the way in the final scene they're wearing those hideous like 50-50 cut in half yeah. uh, Patriots Ooh, Bucks yeah. jerseys that's, that's Brutal. further proof that they're fake fans. fake fans I had that that's, in my notes as well that's, that's also like, Tom Brady being salty fans. as shit I don't even yeah. mentioned the Eagles one yeah. because yeah, yeah, they just had really relaxed that one. Yeah, he had to skip that one. Yeah. Yep. And one other thing, I know, I know this like movie wasn't really going for realism in the first place. A lot of ridiculous things happen, but they they like actually like make their way into like the like the like offensive co- or defensive coordinator's booth up in the stadium and and steal his headphones and like start calling plays, start giving pep talks to Tom Brady. So in that final scene where they like go down to the locker room, like like should be like. Bill Belichick dissolving them in acid. Like, there's, there's, there's no way. There's, there's no way. That, I mean, you, you, you couldn't get away with that. No. Um, so those are my two gripes. Yeah. Yo. Uh, speaking of the scene where they bring him down to the, the locker room, that was another thing I thought was fucking hilarious about it, is that they, they go in a locker room and everyone's just kind of sitting around like they just won, like, a, a preseason game. Like there's no, Dude, there's no right? one's going crazy. There's no shit. Everything's clean. There's no champagne. There's, like, eight guys around. in there. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's just, like, two people milling around. One guy had, like, the ski mask, like, the thing on, like, you're like you're going to spray champagne, but nobody actually is doing it. Yeah. yeah. It was, you're like, what? yeah, it was, like, okay. It was, like, the, the, like the producer or, or the director was telling everybody, it's, like, okay, they told us we can use this locker room, but, like, we can't fuck anything up. Like, we can't. <laughs> to anything like, yeah, that was weird. It was so, but it was like perfectly patriotic. It's very sanitized. Uh, yeah. and, you get uh, one bottle of champagne cold. to share between the rest of you 53 guys. So, like, don't spill yeah. this shit. Yeah. yeah, did y'all catch at the end where, uh, like, the, the whole idea of the jersey swap, that whole scene was kind of dumb, but I did like how Brady goes to get his jersey to give it to her, and he's like, oh. Never mind, I can't find it. You remember his Brady Brady's jersey went missing after that. Yeah, oh. right? it was stolen. Yeah, yeah, oh, was that what yeah. I thought was? Th- I thought Easter that was funny Easter that they kind of snuck that in there. Just like yeah, that whole scene was kind of dumb. Like, why would he want her jersey with sequins on it? But it's what like, percent of people who like went to the movies to see that you think got that reference? A very small percentage. Yeah, of them. No one probably knew what the hell was Easter going egg on. Up in that yeah. movie. Like uh, I was, I was kind of glad that I was still paying attention. I was like, okay, that made me smile a little bit. But yeah, for the most part, man, one of few L's Brady's taken in his football career is a football movie. Ass. Yeah. And the Eagles gave him one of the other L's. Mm hmm. Yeah. Go Birds. Who else was in this movie? Andy Richter had a little part that was kind of. The fake. Uh, uh, <laughs> they had that fake Patriots legend. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, that, yeah. The guy who was like the guy was, that was making out with uh yeah. I was like looking up. Was, yeah. yeah, I was trying to look it up. He it was wasn't like, real, this, was he? No, no, no. I was like trying to look it up. I was like, is this a real guy? Like, what the fuck? Like, no, it's just a made up uh, player in general. Yeah, just uh, you know, just but, someone that you got to make out with Jane Fonda in a closet at a, you know, whatever. 
<laughs> but on to the next one. Do we have it on the docket yet to watch? Well, I don't think we have a movie yet to watch. Yeah, we do have. Uh, we have a. Sh- we have. We have the, the everything but the chip. It's a documentary. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, that'll be our next installment yeah. of. Uh, also, last thing about this movie that oh. the first thing that pissed me off about it was you see them watching TV. Where is the TV? It's on top of the fucking mantel. Dumb, dumb as shit. People always do it. That's too high to put a TV. <laughs> True. Can't be putting a fucking TV that high, especially these old ladies yeah, praying their necks. Like, hey, that is a good watch point. Game? Come on, on that weak ass sofa, there's no vex support. Doing, up you can't in be there. doing that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, that's my that's my last final thought on on eighty for Brady. Uh, so, the of course the obvious uh, 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 news story that we should talk about a little is the speaking of sinking ships. The, the, oh, the, this thing, man! The the sub, submersible, I believe, is what they're called. Not technically not a submarine; it's a sub, submersible, which is like a anything that can a shittier can go submarine. underwater. Yeah. yeah, that thing's tiny, man. Yeah, dude. how are you gonna fit four people you on that? You can't even stand thing? up in it. You can't stand up. It, it's it it operates through like text messages that are sent from a <laughs> from a from a knockoff like, station, Wait, so, like a GameCube controller that you can <laughs> buy off Amazon for thirty dollars. That's my first red flag though. Is that like okay, fine? A maybe the second red flag. The first red flag is that it's two hundred fifty thousand dollars to go see a sunken ship at the bottom of the ocean that you've seen literally. Yeah, Every other fucking docu series shows the yeah, shit like you can I'm just gonna... look on the internet and see the TV's a bigger window than the window you see in that fucking su- submersible. Wait, anyway. no, it's just the thing is actually so you, they actually can't have windows in the thing because like, it's got one. The water it's got, it's yeah, got so a, how it's do got like, see things? It's got, a, it's got like a, can't, it's got a screen, so you could just send this on man down there and watch it from the surface. Yeah, so you're you, seeing the same thing. Yeah, it's Fuck just like you're paying. That. Yeah, you're you're risking your life just so you can technically be like my body was. So many feet away from this wreckage that we're watching on this. Also, iPhone. like you're going down there, you're twelve thousand feet down there, and you're like, "Where do I go?" Like I get lost using Google Maps, let alone people texting me like, "All right, in four hundred meters, make a left." What the fuck? What do you mean? It's pitch black down there. Yeah. This is this is set up for failure. The original guy that was like the director of this shit was like, "We need to update this thing because like there's a lot of safety issues." After he said that, they fired his ass. Yeah. Like, <laughs> really? I didn't know that. Like, I didn't like a, know that. They like got some classic, fucking. Uh, they got some guy that was like, like, head down, just do your job, don't ask questions. He's like, yeah. fucking say no more, send the <laughs> money, we're good to go. It was literally like uh, these government regulations are stifling innovation. I mean, get right. <laughs> yeah. Because so, like, that's, like, that's my thing. I was like, how is this even like legal for them to take these people down there? Did like, you see the video of it getting off the boat? Are there any laws about this? Did you see him dumping off the boat? I thought it was like a crane. You pick it up and like drop it in nice and easy. This shit they just, just like push it off the boat. yeah, they just shove off the back. <laughs> it looks like it, it looks like those rusty old boats that like are doing illegal whaling. Like it's all rusty in the back. There's like guys smoking cigs on the side of it. Like yeah, you're good, make it in there. Like why is there a random billionaire on this thing? Like he loves this shit. He does it for fun. Well, wasn't he the, the CEO of uh, what, whatever the name of the company is that made it? Uh, right, he, he holds you saw him, that video on Twitter, right? Yeah, we were talking yeah. about he's it. He's like the, the the CEO of like the company that does these tour. I don't know if they. I mean, I guess they're the ones that like. He holds the world record the for like most. I think he spent like a shit ton of time, like in the bottom of the ocean for a minute, like a nicer submarine type of thing. Then you got like someone from the Middle East with his son out there, but his son graduated from Philadelphia U. Oh, he's a Philly guy. Well, we gotta they go got get the like, Philly they guy, got like, dude. they're also like billionaires or whatever. They're going like, to let a Philly, he's a billionaire, he's not a Philly well, guy. Well, no wonder he got lost. He was like, yeah, make a left, we're going to go. That was it, they're <laughs> fucked. But I love, that the, I love that like the Coast Guard's like, they have it till 2.30 p.m. on Thursday until they have no more oxygen. I'm like, how the fuck are you going to pinpoint? Come on now. You know they're pooping and peeing down there, well, just wetting themselves, That was my first themselves. thing I looked into was there is a bathroom. But it's, Did you see the toilet in there, well, though? Well, listen, it's not What's like What's that it, do? Does it lead into the ocean? <laughs> I don't know, because there's no way out. Like, it has to. I, I would hope. I mean, I don't think that... I mean, I don't think that they were planning on being in there for any more than a few hours, right? It well, they each got be... one sandwich and one bottle of water. Yeah. Oh, they're, is... probably, they're probably oh, so that's, thirsty as hell. Yeah, that's done. That's done. <laughs> you yeah. know, somebody's... I mean, it's also, also possible like, that the whole thing is imploded by now because that's what they were saying. Is yeah, like the if, water pressure would just make it blow up, I mean, right? That would no, be, that would be the, the best bottom, case scenario for it's them. Only, it, it only, only goes, be if it imploded, they it would only goes down 12,000 and a half feet. 
What do you mean only? That's it's far. The, yeah, but it's that machine is built for like that. It won't like comp- it won't. But is it built to to withstand them that amount of pressure for that long? I don't know how much they only talk about the oxygen. I don't know how much power this boat like what powers the boat to run, electric gas. I don't know. I don't know, man. I mean, if <laughs> the worst part is just how, like, you're the guy driving the thing. They got a generator. <laughs> how confident can you be when you're, like, driving a boat? Like, at one point, you're like, so, guys, I got some bad news. Like, who, like, when does that conversation happen? Yeah, I happen? can't. Dude, well, like, seriously. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, Everyone's uh, like, wow, I'm so excited. We're going to see the Titanic. And then, like, the guy yeah, turns like, around, like, so. Oh, fuck, when am I going to go? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, so you're just playing off, like. We're just cruising, no big deal. Or like, when is at what moment are you like, guys? I fucked up a little bit here. Like, we're kind of stuck down here. Like, <laughs> how does that conversation go? Well, yeah, isn't what was in, in general? Aren't these types of submersed, whatever they call them, aren't they supposed to be connected to a ship above ground that kind of steers them? But this one isn't. Yeah, that's one of those safety so they things known that the guy got fired That this was going to happen. Most of these yeah. things are supposed to have like a. Uh, a drop load so that you could just immediately go up to the surface and this one doesn't have that either How, these guys are so rich why do like why didn't they get like like ol made submersible to i guess they just want to try out the new technology that's what someone was telling me is like you know james cameron when he was making titanic he like went down there like 12 times or something in no like an actual... he went down thirty thousand feet he went down way lower than this shit did yeah in like a real thing <laughs> submarine, like I guess. Yeah, I guess in an actual submarine. These guys are fucked. There's, Dude, yeah. there's no Your way. Rich people are dumb. Dude, it's just though. like hilarious. I mean, because it's, it's like uh, rich people always are doing this kind of shit. Because it's like, uh, you know, I feel like once you make so much money, it's like Hamish is going, the guy's name. Yeah, Hamish, yeah. Hamish Harding or whatever. It's like once you, uh, once you make so much money, it's like going out to fancy dinners and staying in a fancy house and doing all this stuff every night, like, oh, and eventually that kind of runs its course and it's like, you have to find new things to spend insane amounts of money on to like justify your quest to accumulate more money. So it's like, you just have to find stupid shit like, oh, I'm going to spend $250,000 to take this like toy down to, <laughs> to, the, yeah, but, to, the, to the bottom of the ocean it just seems, kill myself. It just seems like when you're this rich, like, this, like <laughs> there's, got so a, there's some guy who's like, you know, got a, got a real one that works. And like, they're like, they're like buying one from Dale Gribble and let's just like go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's just, 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 just got a cigarette in his mouth. They, like, yeah, Good luck, boys. I'm pushing yeah. it overboard, you know. <laughs> they got like the, the Rite Aid brand version <laughs> yeah. of whatever this thing is. Have you guys seen the shit with the, the guy's stepson? Oh, at the Blink-182 yeah. concert? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, you know, pray for my family would want me to be here. Yeah. He also, the, well, because here's the thing. like the key, uh, People are giving him shit for that, but the key, the key thing he is... He can't do anything. Yeah, also, the key thing is stepson. Stepson. Right. He's not his son. Like, look, I don't know what their relationship... He's probably getting some inheritance out of this. Well, yeah. That's why He's just saying that message to just be like, I love them, I miss them, just to show yeah. face that he like, still wants to get that money, that's all. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but I mean, but because uh, like, I get seasick, I, I can't be out there. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know what their relationship is, but I mean, think about this: if it was your, if it was your favorite band, like if, if <laughs> like if this was, if this was like the the Bruce Springsteen show that I paid like a million dollars to go to, <laughs> and I get a call from uh, my brother like the night before, it's like, hey, uh, that rich guy that's been fucking our mom for a few years. <laughs> Uh, is stuck in a submarine at the bottom of the ocean, so you can't go to the show now. I'd be like, what the, f- the fuck are you talking about? You'd be like, well, I'm, going, the- I'm going to see Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care about that guy. I'm honestly, gonna, the best, dad. honestly, the best case scenario, you're like, ah, oh, damn, that sucks. He's stuck in the bottom of the ocean that no one can find where he is. It's not a bad case right there. Also, yeah. apparently, apparently, that kid, that the the kid, the son, the stepson is like a total fucking creep weirdo. Did you hear about this shit? So he was like, he was, uh, uh, like, serially stalked, like, these, like, EDM DJs. Uh, and what? Got, yeah. So he, he was, like, a serial, he, like, was stalking all these uh, female uh, DJs. Because uh, in, in, like, the rave scene, at, at wherever they're from or whatever. And got called out about it online. And then responded by like threatening to like shoot up this concert. What, what the, the hell? Fuck? And eventually he got like arrested for stalking and all this stuff and went to jail for a while. But I guess it was, probably, I'm guessing his billionaire stepdad 
help get him out yeah. earlier than uh, he should have. Oh, uh, then kind of ungrateful if that's the case. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, who knows? So we should put a, him on one of these yeah, things. So this next. guy's bad. Yeah, yeah he, what? Like, he's he a bad person. The guy. Yeah, he should have been the 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 son <laughs> on the on the submarine with him. The well, submersible. Damn, well that took a turn, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, didn't want to, I just felt like I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't like. I mean, context is good because yeah. we were kind of hyping this I was guy. Like, out. By the way, this yeah. guy's a huge piece of shit. Yeah, 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 he doesn't deserve our yeah, thanks. Like, it's... I'm fine with him going to the concert, but fuck him as well. Let's throw him in the next submarine. But I just find the whole thing to be kind of, I don't know, it's just ridiculous to me that this shit happened. I'm and just like, people need to stop fucking with the ocean, dude. I don't understand what it's going to Yeah, you take. don't know what the hell's down there, Not man. only that, but like... that, you remember, like, a few weeks ago when that kid jumped off the cruise ship? That, like, 18-year-old? Do you even see her no. about this? What, what the what? fuck? That's just stupidity, It was, though. like, I don't know. What I, floor? I guess it was on their... I don't know. Like, Suicide? But, like... I mean, top deck, now we're talking. You know, it was First like, floor, not bad. It, <laughs> like, there's, like, a... Yeah, it was... I don't know. It was probably on, like, their... Uh, some trip they took after graduating <laughs> high school. So it was, like, an 18-year-old kid. And he's... I don't know exactly where this was, but it was some kind of cruise. And there's... And he does, like, in the middle of the night, jumps off. And, then, and at first, people were like, oh, damn, he jumped off. Like, Ugh. And then they see him just getting drifted away in the current and it's like oh fuck well, yeah, that's what and, happens when you do that yeah, yeah, yeah. That and no apparently joke. they were like shark infested waters so he probably got eaten up real quick he not even did. he probably just dro- I mean the, the boat can't just like boat. stop the, it the, the, yeah I think like Coast Guard looked for him for a little bit and we're like yeah we're not gonna keep looking for him he's, he's a dead so sorry I mean, he, you know, that's you could have done that shit during a day. I wouldn't even go on a cruise ship, man. I wouldn't fucking with any of that stuff. I'm not, yeah. If I can't see the shoreline, it's too far. I don't even <laughs> like if I'm like far enough out where I'm not confident that I'd be able to swim back. I no, I don't want any part of it. Even if I go to the beach, if I'm trying to go in the water, I get far enough out where I'm like. The water's like chest level. I'm like, this is far enough. I'll yeah, rip current will take you all the way I'll out there. Go if you're any not further than this. I don't mind like fishing and stuff, you know. You I trust that shit a little bit, but it is eerie when you're just on the boat. Like if this shit goes down. Like we're, what? What do you do? Yeah, you're nice done. You. I mean, I've watched Life of Pi, but like, fuck, you're done. You're done, though. Yeah, my thing about the ocean, man, is you don't, know, com- you don't know what the hell's down there. Like yeah, there's in, so many in this case, down there we don't even know. About. Yeah, you're going down like twelve thousand feet beneath the the, the water level. There might be all sorts of animals ready to eat you. Also, Kill, like, the killer whales are mad, man. Free Willy's coming back. He's getting his revenge. Fucking up everybody. That they're yeah. joining in pods and fucking up these boats for no reason. Actually, I saw a chart. They actually, like, um, the giant squids and the killer whales, they can only go, like, one-third as far as the submersible went. Oh. So who knows what's there actually happening. Well, yes, well, yeah, 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 yeah. There's even worse <laughs> stuff out there. Fuck that. that they just sucked up by a giant squid. A mutant giant squid? Also, like you the one can't, the giant squid are afraid of, you know, it's or like a mutant crackens. giant squid mixed with a shark or a killer whale. Yeah, the Meg. The yeah, worst yeah, part is, too, like you can't stand up in this shit. You gotta like, you just. Yeah, they're gonna be getting out of there like the hunchback yeah. another dame. And you know, if they, so were, like, if they were gonna live, yeah, people are like definitely shitting and stuff. The time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've been down there for what three days. They probably had a lot of coffee and shit before they went down there too. Thinking they could just come up, take a shit when they get done. It probably stinks down there. It's probably, yeah, probably ass. Yo, wasn't like someone shit. saying they could pick up signals of banging on the submarine walls? They yeah, heard banging. Yeah, I don't know if that's. I mean, I guess it wasn't but enough for them. They to said find the them, hard like, part is though is that like naturally they hear banging around the Titanic because there's a giant fucking ship there that like shit does bang into and makes noise. So like they can't tell if it's the Titanic or like. That oh, and also mm. the current is so strong at the bottom of the ocean there that like if they did get lost and tried to stop they would just yeah they would just they would just they just away. the way that they should have uh, what they should be doing to make sure that's not just the Titanic is that they should have some kind of like musical rhythm and stuff but they're all a bunch of rich nerdy my white heart guys, will so go they on no, they, can't, they don't have any fucking they can't do that I don't yeah, know they what, don't have no rhythm, they don't have no rhythm. you're making what 1.1 1. 1. and a half like million a dollars off this trip you can't afford a giant fucking chain to tie that bitch up let it sink for a little bit is that asking too they're, much they're rich man they're dumb they don't think like us their That's, perception of reality is so far tainted and gone that they, they don't have common sense the way, same way we do 
I don't yeah, get yeah. it. But they're dead. There's no way they come back. There's no way they're coming back after this shit. Hold on. The, ulti- the, the ultimate bet. I will do four shots on this pod if they come back alive. <laughs> I think we should all do four shots if they come back alive. Yeah, fuck it. I, uh, yeah, I'm in for that. Cause all I'm, right. Uh, uh, yeah, if I they think... come back by next, well, by the next pod, if they're back and alive and well, Can which you... would be great news, then oh, we'll all care. do four I shots. Care. I said this Does, to a coworker uh, the day. I don't care if they die. They're Does FanDuel have odds dumb. for this? It's like, <laughs> oh, that's a dark way. Like, plus a... plus 100,000. <laughs> That they come back alive. <laughs> well, it's got to be going down because they only have two thirty tomorrow. It's <laughs> a live bet in <laughs> times running yeah, out. Yeah, I saw like before we started recording, I saw some tweet that said uh, uh, they, they think that there's like twenty four hours left of oxygen, and that was like eleven hours ago. So I mean, that probably Tick got tock. until time's ticking, man. Got until like uh, tomorrow morning. Well, it's good to get the know? Coast Guard to knock the rust off. You know, do some shit, do some yeah, reconnaissance, think- look around a little bit, take the new toys out. Yeah, I was always someone saying like if they do get rescued, they should they should have to like pay for all the all the money spent on the rescue efforts, yeah, right? They like, should definitely. Yeah, I mean, so it's been taxpayer money trying to rescue these all that dumb, gas. They were like, we got a new fleet coming out today. I'm like, for what? Come on, everybody, let's just take it easy here. Put some planes up in the air. You don't see shit. I'm coming home. We're out, man. Like, come on now. This shit's done. What's this? You think those guys are really looking that hard? Like, what's what's in it for them? To get on that Geo or whatever fucking magazine, Time, Person of the Year. You're not going to get that shit. It's over, baby. They're toast. They're down there. You know, someone, at least one person has definitely killed someone in that fucking thing. You think they're eating each other? Not yet, but it's probably getting close. Because oh, so, I mean, then you figure if they're grim. dead... If they're dead, well, no. If they're dead, then you got more oxygen, and then you figure you could always be like, well, he hit his head, and... What do you do if you're the last survivor? You make up a really well, good story. the other three story. guys die? You make up a real good story. Uh, I'd, pr- I'd probably just kill myself. Also, you're an international I mean, winner. If you're, la- if, you're- <laughs> if, you're- if you're the last guy standing, at least you can jack off one more time before they're not even see you. Before the bodies get cold. I mean... <laughs> Plus, <laughs> you're also in international waters too, so like, there's no law anyway. Right? Someone definitely there's that the driver of the boat is the five definitely the craziest one looking around like, well we're fucked everybody. And they're like, why are your pants off, Bob? They're like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, fuck that. But at least it's a toilet there, so <laughs> that's a big thing. Yeah. But good luck to them. TikTok, we'll see. Yeah. I do kind of want to see if you can play some bets. There, what was that site? Probably Jacob one of those offshore on? uh, Russian sports books. Oh, <laughs> pre- predict it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's uh, the one predicted. I wonder if you can find anything on there. Yeah, Might I, think try that got, uh, I think that got shut down. I don't know. If, oh, I think damn. the human life bet is probably a red flag for most people. But I think that... I don't care. They're rich and just dumb. I, don't, I can care less. Some personally. of them. Even the Philly guy, he's They're rich toast. and dumb. I mean, well, he's not from Philly, so he and us, I'm not, you know, I'm, we're not taking accountability to his ass, but it's definitely getting weird in that fucking thing. People are bugging for <laughs> sure. There's no way they're all like, well, guys, we have four hours, so we're out of oxygen. Let's all fucking pray. Like, someone's fucking bugging. <laughs> I smashed that, like, uh... I, like at some point they must have been like, all right, we need to like try to get some sleep or whatever. And imagine there's just that one dude who's just farting through his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh you're man! On the, oh, you're in this tomb. <laughs> Fuck that! I would. It's also got to get cold as shit down there too. I would think. Yeah, I'm not sure how it's uh, how well it's insulated or what that situation is. If only they had a bigger boat they could sleep in down there. Oh wait. That shit sunk too. <laughs> well, they got the full Titanic experience, and they went down to go see the sunken yeah, ship. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Know, They'll and, die just like everyone yeah, else. Yeah, go for it. That's ass. Yeah, I mean, at least the people on the Titanic, there's probably like a like a nice little dining area and stuff. Yeah, the people on yeah. Titanic could at least probably get drunk as hell when they when well, the writing getting, was on the wall. Listen, when I think that's going down, I'm. <sighs> Although they say you survive yeah, better uh, if you're hammered for shit. <laughs> If you're, on, if you're on the real Titanic, you at least may have gotten to see Kate Winslet's tits before you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, on that note, I believe that's just going to wrap it up for tonight. Uh, Marlon, you got uh, anything going on you want to say before you... Anything to plug? You got anything to plug? Um, 
I mean, not really, but I heard Jenna have nothing to plug, and I thought it was pathetic. So um, <laughs> I'm going to just, you know, just give a shout out to my buddies over at McCusker's Tavern. Um, come by. <laughs> it's at 17th and Shunk Street. Great place to watch a game. If you, you know, if you're a listener out there who thinks that, like, what I said was stupid about Tom Brady or whatever, um, just come in and say to the bartender, where's Marlon? I'm probably there. And um, you can we can talk about it over a beer. Um, <laughs> and I uh, w- want to thank the fellas from the CY Podcast for having me on tonight. Oh yeah, well Thanks thank for you for by. joining. Mm-hmm. It was a pleasure. Yeah, shout out McCusker's man. Have watched many a game, many a win, many a loss, and everything in between. Great place at at the the local establishment there on Seventeenth and Shunk. Plan to watch many more. So uh, plan to do many citywides there as well. For sure. All right, from all of us here at the citywide. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. Peace. See you.